The increasing wave of emigration of Nigerians to other parts of the world is creating more public attention. With the official revelation that Nigeria Immigration Service issued a total of 1,899,683 thousand passports in 2022, the highest in a single year and in the last seven years, shows that Nigerians are on the move, especially professionals, artisans, and even those without any skills desperately in search of opportunities in other climes for survival. According to the 2023 First Quarter Index Report of Enli Passport Index, Japan continues to hold first place in 2023 First Quarter with a visa-free or visa-on-arrival score of 193. Singapore and South Korea in second place with access to 192 destinations without a prior visa. In joint third place are Germany and Spain with access to 190 countries visa-free. However, Nigeria is in the 97th position with access to only 46 countries, while Afghanistan has the fewest number of visa-free access in the world. Joining us now to discuss the Passport Index report is Stuart Wakeman, Henley & Partners Group Managing Partner, UK, Nigeria. Stuart, good morning and morning. thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, quickly, tell us about this Enli Passport uh, Index report, uh, the methodology, the coverage, you know, and then tell us about the power and value mm -hmm. of a passport sure. with regard to, you know, the theme of your report. Okay, so it's a, it's a uh, report that we've been doing for many, many years now. It simply uh, ranks each and every country, uh, 199 are uh, assessed, and it ranks each and every country on how many destinations or how many other countries that passport can get you visa-free or visa upon arrival. So it, uh, it's a very important ranking because it shows the ability of the, the, the na um, citizens of that nation uh, to has, uh, guide you on how many people, uh, how many countries they can uh, travel to. Visa free. Visa free or visa upon arrival. But, yeah. but you say this, uh, this uh, report is based on uh, uh, International Air Transport Association Correct. Report. Yeah, it's exclusive data from the International Air Transport so Association. Does, does that not mean that if citizens from a particular country don't travel that much, then every, every they won't uh, feature? 199 strong. countries are assessed. Um, so it's pretty much every single country on the planet. And then it, it analyzes each and every passport in regards to that. So you're condensing IATA data. Mm -hmm. What are the other indices too, like Dr. Bati asked, that you put in all of this to be able to bring in a report? So it's just only the IATA data you put out? Correct, yeah. So it simply ranks the amount of destinations that that passport holder can travel to. So what informs even the IATA data in the first place? The what, what informs the ranking of these countries based on that IATA data? It's, it simply is the, the, the the, the waivers, uh, the visa waivers that a country has in association with another country. So, for example, Japan, 190 odd destinations. They, we know that because that allow, the, the, the data that just drives that information gives you the, the result. So, we know that Nigerians can only travel to 46 countries without the need for a visa. But what are the lessons that we can extract from this? I mean, if a Japanese has free access to 193 countries, and uh, somebody from Germany and Spain has access, free access to 190, 193, uh, 190 countries. And a Nigerian can only have free access mm -hmm. to 46 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the lessons that we can exp extrapolate? What makes certain passports yep. more powerful than some other passports? So it's, it's driven by many, many, many years of data. But traditionally, it's based upon historic ties between countries. Uh, visa waivers are traditionally reciprocal. So meaning if, if Japan allows British people to travel without the need for a visa, traditionally it allows the, the reverse. And so the, the lessons to be learned are that uh, proactive public relations need to be in place uh, and work needs to be done by the relevant governments to increase the mobility of the passport in question. So is this what informs people now going to get passports of countries like 
St. Kitts and Navies and some other Caribbean countries mm -hmm. that have more visa mileage or more visa-free mileage in parts of Europe and America? Is that what involves that? And is there you know, anything we can also learn from that? Yes, yeah, so uh, you're absolutely right. So a, a Nigerian, a, ne a wealthy Nigerian gentleman or lady can obviously in increase the ability for their global mobility by investing in another country, such as St. Kitts that you, that you mentioned. We at Henley & Partners have effectively 33 programs available. And the, the reason for that is people who have sort of earned money and, and done extremely well in life, they then have the ability to upgrade their passport. But, but the important point is that our clients, of all of my clients in Nigeria, not one single client has relocated. They are doing this for plan B alternatives. They are doing this for greater mobility across the planet, for increased business opportunity. And so it's very different to what we see in Nigeria in terms of the, the younger professional guys who haven't necessarily become a such high net worth individuals, they're leaving potentially for other reasons. But our clients, what we're looking at in terms of upgrading their passports is having that plan B alternative, the ability to travel freely, uh, which their passport at the moment, in terms of Nigerian passport, doesn't allow. Um, no one chooses where they are born. Um, and what we do at Henley allows someone to upgrade their passport by way of making an economic contribution to the country in question. Well, the Nigerian law provides for dual nationality. Mm -hmm. But one of the lines in your report says a passport is not just a useful tool. It's a tool also for financial opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you talk about investment migration. Is it automatic that if you can travel to more countries, then it, it translates into uh, investment opportunity or financial opportunity? What if you are just traveling for purposes of tourism? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have clients who have a myriad different reasons as to why they're looking to um, obtain an additional citizenship or residency. One of them is pure tourism. Well, they want to be able to travel freely. One of them is business opportunity. I have many clients that come to me and say, you know, I'm wanted in a meeting in Dubai or in Europe or the US or, or wherever. And their visa, sorry, their passport is traditionally lost for two, three months during the visa application service. So what this allows them to do is travel freely without the necessity to give their passport in for two, three months or the like. Okay, so all you do is you, you know, you facilitate. But even with all those countries in the Caribbean, they've started to look at them with another eye and critically scrutinize their passports now because they're seeing things like this. I mean, you remember the big scandal that broke out some of, I think, one of the countries in the Caribbean the other day of how this process, you know, and the introduction of people, you know, that have very uncharitable means of living using this as an opportunity. How do you scrutinize the profile? to ensure that you don't have criminals and terrorists using services like this? Yeah. So we uh, do very, very in-depth due diligence on every single client that walks through our door. Um, we then, once we go through that DD, we then decide whether we're prepared to move forward. Then we compile the application ready for the relevant government in question. We are effectively recommending them to the, rec the government in question. And that government then does three or four months of their own due diligence to decipher whether they will accept the applicant or not in the end. So it's a very in-depth and, you know, of course, the odd uh, issue slips through the net, but uh, certainly not with us. And in, in terms of the greater good, there is far, far more uh, accepted than, 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 the, than the ones that, uh, that shouldn't be as such. Anyway, you've been talking about clients, clients. So Nigeria is a very big market. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you, as we say in, you know, uh, local balance, how markets <laughs> in Nigeria? You know, what has been the response? Because, uh, you know, many Nigerians would like to have that second passport since the law allows it better. How is the business in Nigeria in terms of the response from people? And how affordable? Is the service that you provide? Um, 
the, the rules of the programs that we offer are obviously government driven. Um, traditionally, you need to be a high net worth individual to afford what we do. Um, like be a billionaire. Sorry? Like, you have to be a billionaire. Uh, dollar, dollars, I mean, in terms of US dollars, we're talking millionaires, yeah. Millionaires only? Dollars. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, it's never been more affordable. I mean, yes, we're talking for, for high net worth individuals, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's not as unachievable as it used to be. I mean, what is the level of response from Nigerians? Um, over the last four years, uh, we at Headley have seen a 1,100% increase in the business from Nigeria. Okay. All right. I'd well, like to say a very big thank you to you for your time and talking to us about this. And if there's just one advice you'd like to give generally, how we too can improve our passport prospect in Nigeria. Absolutely. You know, what will it be? <clears throat> it's about proactive public relations. So you have to take it from the view of how a country is perceived by the rest of the world. So uh, lots of factors are taken into account when deciphering how many destinations a citizen of a said country can, can travel to. These include the wealth of the country, the GDP, the stability, the government structure, uh, and the list goes on. So it's about improving each and every one of those things. It's not all doom and gloom for Nigeria, absolutely not. You know, The, the visa-free countries that you have uh, been able to travel to as a Nigerian citizen has, has not decreased hugely. Uh, I think they've lost 19 in the last 10 years. So it's remained relatively stable. You know, lots of people have plummeted, lots of nations have plummeted. Uh, this, this has remained relatively stable, but there is a lot more that the nation can do to improve public relations uh, and offer then start offering, offering these reciprocal visa-free arrangements that we talked to about at the top of the show. Anyway, well, thank you very much, Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.